Hello everyone, thanks for joining today's video. Going to have a look at the weather next week, 10 days in today's video. This takes us more or less to the end of May. We'll go to around the 28th of the month uh, with this update, see what's going on. I'm going to start off looking at the chance of more heavy rain in the southeast tonight. So this is the GFS for 6 o'clock this evening. Uh, we see that we've got the main area of low pressure, which is out to our northwest up here. But we've got this uh, little area of low pressure developing down here across northern parts of France. Quite a lot of heavy rain associated with that. And overnight, this is 6 o'clock in the morning tomorrow morning, that's running up the North Sea just off the East Anglian coast. It's going to be bringing some quite wet weather into the southeastern part of the country. This is the precipitation forecast for 6 o'clock in the evening, this evening from the GFS. But we've got quite a few heavy showers in the northwest, otherwise, apparently, dry weather. But notice huge, massive heavy rain that's across uh, France, very bright colours in there. And overnight, that uh, pushes northwards. This takes us to midnight, where we see it's turning wet across the southeastern part of the country, but the really heavy rain is towards the East Anglian and uh, southeastern coast of England. So very, very torrential rain, just clipping the coastal fringe there uh, at midnight. And then that carries on northwards, uh, up the uh, North Sea. So by 6 o'clock in the morning, Pouring with rain across the eastern part of East Anglia, really from Norwich eastwards, torrential rain there. And it is pushing northwards in towards the eastern coast of Lincolnshire and uh, Yorkshire as well. Now, there's showery rain, but not all that heavy through parts of uh, other parts of Lincolnshire down in towards the Midlands and some uh, central southern parts of England, further northwest of that. It's mostly dry, but it looks like the GFS wants its heavy rain mostly restricted towards the coastal fringe. And then through tomorrow itself, that rain uh, continues close to the east coast with heavy showers breaking out elsewhere. So that's how the uh, GFS is seeing things. But the high-resolution Euro 4 model is bringing this rain a little bit further in, inland. So this is the um, midnight precipitation forecast from Euro 4. This is at website Weather Online, by the way. You find the link to Weather Online on the link's page. We find we've got quite a lot of wet weather in the southeast uh, at midnight tonight. Uh, by six o'clock in the morning, that heavy rain again is running up the east coast. It's, it's a little bit further inland, so there's some quite wet weather through the Midlands down into central southern parts of England uh, with this one. However, the very heavy sort of rain, I think, similar to the GFS, really, it is more towards East Anglia and uh, this east coast. We get through into tomorrow afternoon. This will be day tomorrow. Still wet on the east coast. Showers beginning to break out elsewhere. I mean, in the afternoon, the rain starts to ease off across northeastern England, east and Scotland. But they've got these heavy showers breaking out in the west particularly. And those look really quite intense showers indeed, possibly with hail and thunder. So some very wet weather coming into the far southeast tonight. A little bit uncertain how far inland this rain is going to get. There could certainly be some showery rain through parts of Yorkshire, Lincolnshire, down in towards the middle, particularly the East Midlands, some central southern parts of England. But I think it's really East Anglia, the far southeast of England, and probably the coast of Yorkshire and Lincolnshire, where we're going to see the heaviest of the rain. Uh, with this overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning. I wouldn't be ruling out another 25 millimetres or so on those coastal fringes. So the coastal roads will be uh, a little bit awash tonight and tomorrow morning. Right, let's have a look at weather next week to 10 days. So I'm going to start off with 500 millibar height anomaly flow charts. We've got the uh, ECMDF here on the top, the GFS. Have a look around in a moment. Is on the bottom. Uh, 500 millibars, 80,000 feet is an area in the absolute high pressure, low pressure are being moved around by jet stream running above. Red extrapolates high pressure, blue to low pressure. These are the flow charts for the next week to 10 days, which takes us to the 28th of May. We find that the ECMDF is placing a ridge out to our west and northwest with a trough of low pressure uh, to the east. It means that with the jet stream and the flow, we're doing something rather like that. Looks quite cool, actually, that as we go through to the last stages of the month. The winds are in from a north-northwesterly type direction. And uh, this ridge, it is blocking off the Atlantic a little bit, so there could be a fair amount of dry weather. What we've got to watch out for, of course, is this trough in the Atlantic just here. If that undercuts the block, same old story, really, of what's just happened yesterday with yesterday's deluge. If that undercuts the block, 
goes in that sort of direction, then we are at risk of bringing more heavy rain, particularly down into the southern part of the country. The north will always be drier because you're closer to that ridge. The uh, GFS actually shows that happening to some degree. So again, this is the mean flow chart for next week, 10 days, taking us to the end of May. We've got that ridge up to the northwest of the country, or out to the northwest of the country. We've also got the trough uh, to the northeast, so the mean flow is coming from a north northwest direction. But look at this area of Blairbridge Heights to our south. That's low pressure undercutting the block, and that's always an omnipresent risk at this time of year and into the summer. If you've got blocking up here, high pressure up there, it will always be a risk that you'll undercut the block by low pressure from the Atlantic. And if that happens, it's typically southern parts of the country that are wettest compared to northern areas where you're close to this high pressure and it tends to be dry. So the GFS does look a little bit more unsettled there with the Atlantic undercutting the block uh, as we're going through to the end of the month. These are the GFS temperature and precipitation ensemble. So that's a couple of weeks. So the red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average. So we're going to be a bit cooler than average over the next few days. Going warmer than average briefly at the start of next week. And uh, then we cool off again. Overall, not a great deviation with the temperatures. Although there might be a little bit of a warming trend here. This is the end of May and It might be a little bit of a warming trend evident uh, in that particular period but overall nothing particularly excessive excessive with uh, temperatures either warm or cold precipitation so there's tonight's uh, torrential rain coming into the far south east of the country this is the ensemble for london by the way so it's gonna be turning wet down in london um after that showery uh for friday saturday a little bit drier sunday monday then more rain through next week generally again looking quite showery in nature but overall it's a fairly unsettled looking ensemble moving through to the end of may and the start of june temperature anomalies look like this uh, this is going to take us from the 18th, 26th of May, coming out a little bit cooler than average for the UK, Ireland and France as well. So slightly on the cold side. Precipitation looks unsettled, really. It's a little bit driving average, interesting, down to the far southwest, but most parts of the country coming out with average or above average rainfall. The generic charts look like this. GFS for Monday shows low pressure beginning to advance it off the Atlantic, bringing another band of rain uh, through. That's clearing out of the way on Tuesday, leaving us with a showery uh, scenario. Wednesday finds a ridge building out to the west. The wind is turning into the north, so it looks quite cool there as we're going through into the middle part of the week, but probably turning drier with this ridge tending to block off the Atlantic a little bit. Those dry conditions continue into Thursday, but the wind direction is coming from a north northeast, so it's not going to be a heat wave. And then as we go up towards the bank holiday weekend, this is Friday 26th of May, on into Sunday 27th, we find that we have got high pressure still blocking to our north. But these areas of low pressure out to the west, to me, it looks like we're at risk of them starting to undercut the block over the bank holiday weekend. Uh, up to day 10, which is uh, Sunday 26th, 28th of May, the high pressure just about warding off those areas of low pressure. But it's a close run thing, and uh, this could still spoil the bank holiday weekend, or these areas of low pressure could still spoil the bank holiday weekend if they were to undercut the blocking feature. The uh, East Central Earth looks like that. High pressure to our east on Monday with low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. That turns us unsettled through the first part of next week. This is midnight Tuesday. We've got low pressure over the country, so showers or longer spells of rain coming through then. Wednesday finds that low pressure exiting into the North Sea with the wind turning into the north. High pressure building out to our west. So that is setting things down a little bit, but it's cool with the wind coming down from the north. There could be showers in the north and the eastern part of the country as well. Running up to Bank Holiday Weekend, that high pressure is still there, centred to our north, but extending a reach down across the country. That's how we finish up on day 10. So we've got a lot of blocking still to our north. It's extending the ridge down. We've got trough through Scandinavia, bringing another push of northerly winds to them. So perhaps the cold weather for Scandinavia isn't quite over just yet. And this low pressure, that's the one we've got to watch out for. If that undercuts the block over the bank holiday weekend, it could spoil things for the bank holiday. As it is, this ridge 
it's a complicated plan, but this ridge is probably just about bringing a fair amount of dry weather uh, for the bank holiday weekend. But it's a very, very close run thing. The ridge looks quite flimsy. I wouldn't be too surprised if this area of low pressure actually starts to send up some shortwave features, particularly to the south, and spoils things just in time. For back holiday, we'll have to wait and see. So that's how we for next week to 10 days. We've got the rain coming up tonight in the southeast. Another inch of rain, certainly not out of question for the very, very far southeastern part of the country tonight towards the coast. Showery rain elsewhere. Showers then continuing uh, for the foreseeable future, really, which is the next sort of five to seven days. Will be further showers at times, and then we get through to the second half of next week. We might start to build down some blocking from the north. The ridge might extend down from the block, if you like. But we've got to watch out for low pressure running underneath the block. If it does, then we could be in for quite a dismal uh, bank holiday weekend, and we'll know more uh, in a few days. Right, that's all for now. JMA Friday tomorrow, which will be the month ahead. Look ahead with Japanese and CFS V2 miles. So come back there. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.